I have to admit, I didn't think this video would turn into a yearly tradition for this channel, but it seems like note-taking apps on iPad are going through a big change now, not only in how they charge for the service, but also with loads of new features like AI, PDF compatibility, and more. So it's time to look at them again. And as usual, my only rule for this video is that each app has to support Apple Pencil input, which means some big guns like Notion are just out of the picture. Sorry. And I also just want to say I can't cover absolutely everything in this video, but what I can say up front is that all of these apps could easily be your overall note taker, and I'm going to try my best to remain objective, but some of my opinion is obviously going to leak into here. But anyway, let's get right into it. Let's start with the wonderful and pre-installed Apple Notes. And honestly, most people could probably just stop looking for a great note-taking app here. In fact, there's this funny meme about Apple Notes and it just kind of shows what everyone is thinking in loads of different ways. Anyway, Apple Notes is just a fantastic app and it keeps getting better and better. There's always something new coming to it. Last year, we had actionable handwriting, meaning you can turn dates and times into reminders or calendar appointments with a long press, smart drawing for getting perfect shapes, locked notes, handwriting to text conversion, and recently Apple added incredible support for PDFs too, so you can now insert them into your notes and edit them as well. Not to mention because it's an Apple first app, you get different integrations on the OS level too, so you can tap the iPad while it's sleeping to get into a quick note straight away, and swiping up from the bottom right will even open up a quick note regardless of what app you're in on the iPad. There's probably plenty of little tips and tricks here I could make about this, so maybe I just need to make a video on it. Apple doesn't forget about the desktop app either. It's on every Mac as standard and it works flawlessly. And the same goes for the iPhone app, which adapts really well for a smaller device, which is something a lot of the other apps can't seem to get right. It's obviously not perfect though. I hate that the pencil inputs and text inputs can't be next to each other and it's 100% missing a record button. So if you're in a lecture, you'll have to record that for another app and then insert it after, which just isn't great. And while the desktop app is great, it's Mac only. You can see them through iCloud.com if you're on a PC, but that's about it. Overall, Apple Notes has very few drawbacks. It's truly an excellent app. This next one is brand new to me and it came about because so many people recommended it in the last video I made on this, and that's Colonote. Colonote stands out because it's one of the better free offerings out there with no limits on the amount of notes you can take, which makes it a great test bed if you are looking for a paid app. Colonote offers pretty much everything you could want from a note taking app, good PDF markup, audio recording when taking notes, links between pages and smart drawing. But one of the standout features for me, and this might sound silly, is when you zoom out. When you do this, a little menu pops up on the left, which allows quick access to other notes. And then it even opens a new instance of the app if you tap on one, which is so useful. I really, really like that. There's a bunch of other little features too. You can add in pen sounds for that ASMR feeling when writing, which actually just sounds like sand to me. And there's a handwriting stabilizer too, which is pretty aggressive even on the low setting. And as far as I can tell, it hasn't helped my handwriting at all. Colono offers a one-off payment if you want to upgrade, which is how I wish all note takers still handled things, but that seems to be a dying feature at the moment. Other apps have offered one-off payments before and then turned around and gone down the subscription route anyway. So it just makes me wonder how long this will last for. I am going to say this about Colono though, I don't think it really stands out in any meaningful way against the others on this list, other than offering a kind of collaborative way to take notes with others, which isn't something I would personally use. I'm not huge on the design of this app either. Overall, Colono is a good app, but I don't think it really does it for me. Okay, next up is Nebo. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's Nebo or Nebo, I don't know. Anyway, I took a look at Nebo last year and I quite liked it. And that sentiment has stuck around. Nebo is decent and it's had some really interesting updates to the app since I last looked at it. The big one here that sets it apart is the AI assistant within your notes. This is cool and I honestly don't normally say that about AI stuff, but you can circle a bunch of your writing and ask it to be summarized, or you can ask for explanations of terms and events, or you can even just ask the AI about anything you like. It's a really cool implementation and I think it suits a note taker quite well. I know if I was a student, for instance, I would absolutely love this. The good stuff from last year is still here too. The Apple Pencil tuning is great and feels even better than Apple's native app. The handwriting to text conversion has been perfect for me and the maths object, while I don't really use it, is another cool feature which I'm sure some of you will love. 
There's also the option to turn your notes into a canvas and get an infinite space to write on, which is something I love for brainstorming or for sketching out larger ideas. My only bugbear with Nebo is there's no audio recorder, which is a real bummer. I think most note takers should have this as it's so useful for students and for people in business that need to record meetings. There's also no dedicated desktop app per se. It's just the iPad one on Mac and it works just fine. Nebo is free on the surface and you can use all the features on here, which is cool, but you only have five pages to do so. There's then a one-off paid upgrade, which should last forever, but who knows how long that will actually last. If there's anything that's been happening with note takers recently, it's moving to a paid subscription service, even when they say they won't. I like Nebo though. This is a fine note taking app that appears to be on the front end of new features. And I just think it's cool. Okay, let's jump to another note taking classic. This is Microsoft's OneNote. I really, really like OneNote. It was my main note taker at one point, but I have to admit, since coming back to it for this video, it feels like absolutely nothing has changed. And I guess that's for better and for worse. For better, that means the awesome organization is still here. I love the OneNote is laid out and getting through and sorting through your notes is a great experience. All notes can expand into a huge canvas too, which I really like. And the cross-platform nature of the app means it works incredibly well regardless of what you're accessing it on. So if you're on iPad, Mac, Windows, Android, web, whatever, you name it, it's here and all the apps work really well too. If I was a PC user, this is absolutely where I'd take all of my notes for sure. For worse though, you still can't write and record audio at the same time, which is so frustrating. I was hoping this would be gone by now, but it's not. You can't link between notes in a pleasant way either. And there's still no handwriting to text conversion unless you're on the desktop Windows app. I was again hoping that this would be here by now, but it's not. Overall, OneNote is great, and I think a lot of people really love it, but I do worry it's just getting a bit left behind now. Before we carry on, I wanted to take a moment to talk about a sponsor of this video, Paperlike and their Pro Bundle. The Paperlike Pro Bundle is a one-pack solution to get the most out of your iPad experience, including two of their excellent screen protectors, a double pack of pencil grips, and a cleaning kit. And if you weren't already sure, the Paperlike screen protector is the only screen protector for iPad that I really recommend if you want one. I've used them for a long time between all of my iPads, and I really do think they're the way to go. Paperlike does double duty here too. Not only does it protect your screen, but it really makes it feel like you're writing, drawing, or sketching on paper, getting rid of that unnatural feeling of writing on glass. If you're an avid pencil user, and maybe you are if you're watching this video, the pencil grips are also worth checking out, which are included in this pack. These come in pairs with one designed for either long writing sessions to reduce grip fatigue, and the other one for more precision-based inputs, making it perfect for drawing. Paperlike products work best together, so rounding out the pack is a cleaning kit, which not only is the perfect way to clean your iPad, but any electronic devices you have to hand. These all come packaged together with a little bit of a discount, so if you want to check out the Pro Bundle, follow the link in the description below. And of course, a huge thanks goes out to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Okay, moving to the big shots now, and let's start with the iPad and App Store darling, Notability. And look, straight up, Notability is a very, very good note-taking app, and it has pretty much everything you'd ever want and need not to mention it has the best Apple Pencil tuning. Seriously, this thing is a pleasure to take notes on and I feel like I can write for days and days on this and not tire from it. It's a really nice experience. There has been a big design overhaul of update 14 though, and this has left a lot of people pining for the way it was. Update 14 brought a floating toolbar for writing and changing settings, and I really don't love it. While it works and I get the idea behind it, I often just find myself juggling it with my wrist or selecting things accidentally, or even just losing it on the page. As boring as it is, I think a standard set toolbar at the top makes the most sense. That's usually where I end up leaving it anyway. So yeah, I can really see why people aren't loving this new update. Other than that, it's great for pretty much everything. There's smart drawing, PDF markup and importing are all handled well. And the gallery is a great place to get inspiration for all of your notes or to download others. There's a desktop app too, but it's only for Mac OS. So if you're on anything else, you're out of luck here. And there's no way to view your notes on the web either. That's a real shame. Hey, Editing Tom here, and I totally forgot to mention that Notability doesn't have a way to let you link between pages natively within the app, and I think that's a real shame because it's one of the big features I use all the time, and Notability should totally have it. There is a free version of Notability, but it's pretty limited, so you'll want to jump up to the paid version if you want the most from it, and sadly, there's no one-off option here. This is £15 a year regardless of what you've paid for in the past, even if that was a one-off purchase, like me. Right, let's move on to the last on the list here, and that's GoodNotes 6. 
<sighs> I've made a full review of GoodNotes 6 and its current state and how they tackled their transition from GoodNotes 5. Spoiler, they didn't do a great job. However, I still really like GoodNotes. The updates they introduced with 6 haven't been game changing by a long streak, but there's some cool new stuff here. They introduce scribble to delete and circle to lasso, which completely speeds up your workflow and feel very intuitive. There's also a spell check and correction using AI, which is a little janky, but I really love it. They also introduce some maths AI stuff and exam papers you can take, but they feel pretty half-baked at this point. And they also finally introduced linking between pages and an audio recorder, which is awesome to see. GoodNotes also nails the fundamentals. It's great for PDF markups, smart drawing, picking paper styles and sizes, and pretty much everything else you could want from a note taker. I said this last time, but GoodNotes is the only app here that feels the most lifelike. It's like I actually have a notebook with me while using the app. There's a real sense of tactility that no other app seems to get right. Another great update is GoodNotes is now completely cross-platform too. This is awesome. There's apps for Windows, Mac, iPad, iPhone, Android, and even the web, even though that's still coming soon, which is just great to see. There's obviously still things I wish it did better though. I still find the organization of this app a little weird with outlines and favorites taking the place of something like chapters or markers, so I just don't use them. The pencil tuning doesn't feel as good as Notability or Nebo, and the dark mode is basically a joke. I also wish they just handled moving from GoodNotes 5 to 6 better. This is worth watching my full review for, so I'll link this up here, but there's so many issues with pricing, features, and the unclearness of what's happening with GoodNotes 5. Despite those bad things though, I really love GoodNotes. It's still a really fantastic app. Anyway, on a more positive note, let's talk about the winners and let's start with the free category first. And look, there really is no better place to look than Apple Notes. It's free, it's pre-installed, and it just keeps getting better and better. This is also the best of all the note takers I've talked about that works really well on your phone too, when all of the others don't. You really can't go wrong with Apple Notes, assuming you're in the Apple ecosystem. For the runner up, I also want to shout out OneNote here because it's so good, but I think it lends itself better to a cross-platform ecosystem rather than an Apple only one. If your main desktop machine is a Windows, then you should consider this your winner for the best free app. The only thing I do wish it would be more consistent with is its updates. It's starting to feel a little slack here compared to the other note takers on this list. Moving over to the pay category now, and I don't think I've ever had as much trouble as I have this year picking a winner. They're all very good and each has its own positives and negatives, but the winner this year for the third year in a row is GoodNotes 6. And look, honestly, I didn't really want to give it to GoodNotes this year because of the way they handled the transition from GoodNotes 5, but the app is just so, well, good. From feeling down to features, I really do think GoodNotes has it all while still retaining a strong sense of design. It's the only note taker out there on this list that feels like it has a personality. I really think the new updates are useful too. The AI functions, for instance, are done really well without feeling overbearing. So well done GoodNotes, again. For the runner-up though, it's Nebo. I was really impressed with this last year and this year even more so. It feels pretty ahead of the game with the AI assistant, which I generally thought I'd hate, and the pencil tuning feels fantastic, the variation of document types you can make is great, and it's overall just a decent app, and the pay version of it is one-off, at least for now. So there you have it for 2023. Those are all of the note takers that I've been testing. But if you've been using anything different or anything else, let me know in the comments below. I always love to hear from you. And as ever, I will see you all in the next one.